early on you did a modal course you did a video course on modes and you're mm -hmm. one of the first guitar players that i heard that actually talked about modes i talk about modes a lot on my channel mm -hmm. i want you to talk about your concept with that and why people should learn modes oh god <laughs> you know i couldn't play anything if i didn't understand modes and the problem is there's so much gray area when it comes to what is a mode, you know. I did a video years ago called uh, Monster Licks. No, 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 not that one. It's called Modes No More Mystery. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to clear it up because I, I found a way to demonstrate it that I thought broke through because I used to, it worked on my students. And so, look, we have a major scale. Everybody knows the major scale. If you were to practice all the modes in one key, if you took E major, then you took F sharp Dorian, then G sharp Phrygian, it all still sounds like E. And so the first thing I did was, okay, scrap that idea, because you're never going to hear the difference, because I would have students ask me all the time, Frank, why on earth do we have to le learn seven modes when they're all the same as major, <laughs> right? Okay, my first answer to that, I go, that's great. I'm glad you thought of that, but you're wrong. And the reason is this. Would you call a major scale the same as a minor scale? And the answer has to be no. no. Otherwise, get out. <laughs> Come back when you learn something. Uh, no. Look, each scale, if you start them all on the same note, that's where you really hear the difference. So that's the first thing. First thing, major, E major. It was a bad translation. These should have been called moods. Moods, not modes. Major is incredibly happy. Every happy song you hear is major. And major is the fundamental of all music theory. It's the scale to which all scales are compared, right? And so if you want Dorian, instead of starting on F sharp, start it on E. So that would be the second degree, so that would be the same as the notes of D major starting on E. So you do this. Now we're starting to hear a difference. It's minor for size. It's got a flat third, four, five, six, and a flat seven. Etc. You do the same thing with the third mode would be third mode of E would be G sharp Phrygian, but I want E Phrygian, so that'd be the same notes as C major starting on E. This is kind of Spanish Phrygian. Is that a flat second? Nasty. Flat third, four, five, flat six, flat seven. And you see how they're very different to one another when you compare them from a intervals and where they lie. Major 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Dorian 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7. Phrygian 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. Lydian would be the next one, would sound like this. I took it one step further. I thought, 
you know, okay, there's one thing to know the intervals. The next thing, you have to know uh, how to make a chord progression based on that mode. So I always like the one, four, five triads of major. And even just four and five, those two triads, you, you know, they're a whole separate part, so they must be four or five of major, of E major. A and B would be four or five of, of E. So if I wanted to practice a major scale, I would pra practice... So the next mode would be Dorian, the 4 and 5 of, well, E Dorian is D major, 4 and 5 is G and A, so I would play 4 and 5 of each of the pairing scales, exactly. and that would give me my mode. This is where I broke through for a lot of people. People yeah. would chase me down on the street. I got it! My students were going, yeah, I got it! I thought, you know, it'd be a year later, but who cares? It doesn't matter when the ball drops, as long as you yeah. get it. And That's so where I, your Phrygian, where your F and G come in for Phrygian. That's the sound there. Yes. Same thing. You use one, four, and five. Because mm -hmm. one is minor and the four and five are major, so that's enough to, to establish. isolate and nice establish. Melodic minor would be four is major, five is major. That would be my melodic minor practice progression. Or you just take a nasty one chord. Yep. Probably me. Find a little vamp where the third moves on the minor, uh, minor nine, major seven. That's the sound. Of it. It's the James Bond spy movie chord. Yeah. Yes. So that's melodic minor one, and every now and then you get a. Stevie Wonder, man, he writes the hip of shit. Not many people write a, a melodic minor hit, and it's C minor, two dominant seven chords, four or five melodic minor. So, wow, you know, it's out there. People use this stuff if they're smart. It can really help you sound different to, you know, the, to me, the artists that break through are the ones that are doing something different. There's a lot of people that follow, but I mean, be out the front and, and doing something interesting because I think you know we shouldn't underestimate the public and what they're going to accept. Stevie's always written the hippest tunes. Same with Steely Dan and, and Fagan just and Sting. I mean I remember hearing a police song back in the day and I thought wow you know we can write songs with one four five all you want. Are you going to stand out? Probably not really but if you got something like uh, this But check out the chords. <laughs> People, don't, you don't have to do dumb stuff. You can write some cool chords, you know? People take anything as long as it's got a strong beat and a strong melody. Uh, you can stretch out harmonically. Why not?